This is going to be the beginning of a set of videos, and this video is going to be basically me setting up a React app and explaining the kind of project that I'm going to do here. And then um, after that, I'm going to kind of go in depth and detail of building the React app that we're going to do to build this site that I want to build. And uh, we're going to use Redux, and it's all going to be client side. So I'm going to do no back end, and I'll probably just deploy it to an S3 bucket or something. But I'm going to go through everything. I'll purchase a domain name, deploy it out to a bucket, and um, have the have the app up and running. And hopefully I'll do it uh, all recorded here, so I won't skip any parts, maybe. Um, so that's kind of the background. And then I guess the, the other thing is that's what I want to do. So what I want to build, though, is something that's going to be like a calculator for figuring out what kind of components you want to use in a um, quadcopter. So I really like this site called Logical Increments and this is this site's been around a really long time. Uh, for people that build custom PCs you can see like what's a modest graphics card and what kind of processor could I pair with it and maybe like what kind of motherboard would be compatible with that that kind of thing and then it tells you how much it'll cost. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is I kind of wish if you could click like I could pair this one with this one with this one and then it would calculate a running total of how much um, that would cost basically. So I want one more feature in addition to this and I don't want it to be for computers. I want it to be for um, uh, mini quad racers. So just in case you don't know what that is, uh, it's kind of like a a quadcopter but you build them yourself they go really fast uh, the frames are typically carbon fiber you can go and just buy motors you can buy um, uh, whatever propellers so uh, it gets really involved in pairing these components together and there are a lot of components but I found a nice uh, post on Oscar Liang's website and he kind of goes through a lot of components that you want to use and um, so it starts with frames and then you want to have a flight controller to control the thing then you've got the motors which are what actually spin the props and then um, propellers of course and then there's these things called ESC's which are the electronic speed controllers and that's what takes the signal from the flight controller and spins the motor um, or sends pulses of power to the motor to spin it and then you've got a camera um, you've got a video transmitter, um, finally an antenna, and then there's other things that are more like accessories that don't really have anything to do with the actually building the quadcopter itself. So I might do some of that stuff too, but basically I want to build something kind of like this website, um, but for mini quad racing. And I'll probably start out with just a couple of these and maybe we'll We'll try and use Amazon as a data source maybe, or we'll try to just hard code everything into React files. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get the data quite yet, but we're gonna work on that. But the main thing I wanna do is kind of build out this framework here to build this board and then these hover overs and everything. And then I wanna build a system that if you, you can like toggle these on and off so that they add up in your calculator and you have like some kind of running total that'll, that'll follow you on the side of the screen. So that's my idea here. And then of course I'll, I'll add in stuff like um, discuss, but we're gonna do this all in React. It'll be um, all just like one static deployment and I'll try and deploy it to an S3 bucket. So the thing I wanna start with is this Facebook create React app. And it's, it's a nice, um, super simple uh, React starter. It's not like the Creasoft one. There's another, there's another React um, starter kit called React, React Starter Kit. And um, this one is a little bit more heavy. It's got a node server on the back end, so it's got Express running in the background. And it's got React, it's got Webpack, it's got... Um, it's got Redux built into it. I kind of want to go a more minimalist route and just start with this and then actually we'll add in Redux ourselves manually once we start to need it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just start by installing this generator. So I have 
uh, directory here. I called it FPV build calc, and I'll hit paste here. So this is just going to install the generator, and then we're going to run the generator, and it's going to create some boilerplate code, I believe. So I want to say create React app, uh, create React app. FPV um, build calc. So I think it's going to just create some boilerplate code and then it's going to run npm install. So it's right now I, I'm guessing it's running npm install and we're just installing all the packages after it has created the boilerplate code. And I just noticed my directory structure is a little silly here because I created the directory ahead of time. Um, so I'll fix that later. We won't fix it right now in the video. I'm just going to move into it after this is finished. So this is Z shell and I'm using node six. It's a little bit outdated right now, but I had a project that had to use node six and uh, I was using it for that. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is let's just jump in there. So you can see it created that directory. I'll zoom in here for the camera um, so the first thing you probably want to do is just look at the package JSON and you can see that there is a start script there is a build script there's a test script and then eject I'm not even sure what that is so I guess we'll have to find out but I'm just gonna do npm run start and it's gonna run that start script so looks like it's going to probably start running on port 3000 and there it is it's already running my browser it notified Chrome to open up that tab so this is it this is the app right here so I'm gonna split this and I'm just gonna start Adam up all right and let's take a look at the files that we have generated here so through a readme in here, um, there's a package JSON. We already looked at that. Uh, git ignore. This is just pretty standard stuff. Ignore the node modules. Ignore build script or build output. Um, App.js is. Let's see what the actual entry point is. The entry point looks like it is index.js. So in a React app, you have to render the root node into a um, point in the document and this is what's happening we've got a we've got a div somewhere so we've probably got yeah there it is this div ID root we're actually gonna that's our render point where the whole app is gonna get rendered out and then then and there we're placing app and app is defined here so app is pretty simple it's got a, a div that wraps it with class name app then a header and then a p tag and then we've got a test that they've created here. Um, this is just a, a very simple unit test. Um, there's some CSS. And um, finally, there's this register service worker. I think you can ignore this for now. But the point of this is to register a service worker for some offline use in case your website goes offline, but you still want to load content. And we just don't, we don't need to worry about this for now. So I think what we want to start with is probably adding something like material UI. So I really want to get a, a UI component system in here quickly before we start doing anything else. So I'm going to say material UI and so this is it. I think what we're going to do is um, install this in here. Um, what do we want to look at? Let's look at get started, installation. Um, so you just have an NPM package it looks like. So I'm actually going to go to their GitHub. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, npm, whoops, that didn't work, npm install material UI dash dash save. Tried to zoom in there. Okay. So, got that installed in the node packages, and then because I did dash dash save, uh, we have that as a dependency now, right there. Okay. So. I think let's just go ahead and make sure this is working. I'm going to import this right in the main app thing and just throw a button in there. So we will find out quickly whether or not this is going to work. And then the, the thing that I'm going to do is say raised because I know that's a um, that's a thing on this button that's going to make it actually look like a button. can't resolve it. So I think that might be because we didn't restart the app here, but if we restart it, it'll probably work. Nope, nope, it sure can't. So let's make sure material UI is installed. So I'm gonna say uh, L node modules and then I can look up in the M's. Well, it says it's in there. So we'll say node modules, material UI, and then button. There is certainly no button in there. So that's interesting. We're on point one nine point four. So that seems very strange. Let's try something else. <laughs> uh, See, the problem is this documentation might be for the next version of Material UI, and we probably got the current version of UI, Material UI. Let's see what branch we're on. Yeah, we're on this beta branch. I'm gonna go back to the master branch. Okay, let's try raised button. Sorry, I'm also used to using the uh, the beta version. So I'm thinking we can get that off of there. Oh, raise button. There we go. All right. Oh uh, yeah, that is a this is a thing. So the other thing with Material UI is you need this theme provider, which I forgot about. So let's go ahead and inside of the index, let's do this. We'll say const um, And then we're going to do something like this. And we'll wrap app in the in the theme provider. And then I'll put that wrapper in here, if that makes any sense. So this theme provider looks like it's a required thing with Material UI. And um, I'm just going to throw the app component around inside of this so it gets wrapped around it. And then we'll put the wrapper in here to get rendered instead. So let's see if that works. Yeah. 
it looks like that fixed everything. So now we've got Material UI working. So I think the next thing I'll do is I will probably start to build out maybe like a header or we'll keep this header maybe and then I'll try to build out some of the body and the body I'm not sure how I'm going to do this quite yet but probably I'll use some kind of like grid or layout or table component or we'll build the components and um, and then I'll probably add Redux in after we get that done so that when you toggle one of these it goes into the Redux store and then you'll be able to do the calculation based on the Redux state so that will be next video. Thanks for watching.